Hello everyone, I'm Susan Kiyoshima from Etic Research. I'm going to talk about my work, Round Optimal Black Box Committant Proof with Succinct Communication. As the title of this work suggests, in this work, uh, we study succinct committant proof protocols. In particular, we obtain a new committant proof protocol by using a two round succinct argument. So, in this talk, I will first explain two round succinct argument and the committant proof protocols, and next explain our result and techniques. So, let's begin from two round succinct argument. So what is a succinct argument? A succinct argument is a two-party protocol between a prover P and a verifier V. The goal of a succinct argument is that the, the prover compenses the verifier of the correctness of the state. In this work, we focus on two round succinct argument. So uh, the protocol consists of uh, just two messages. The first message is a query message from the verifier and uh, the second message is an answer message from the prover. For the security, uh, succinct, succinct arguments are required to satisfy completeness and soundness, whereas uh, completeness requires that uh, when the statement is true, the verifier always accepts the proof made by honest prover, and uh, the soundness requires that uh, when the statement is false, the verifier rejects any proof made by a malicious prover. And additionally, as an efficiency requirement, a succinct argument that required to satisfy succinctness, uh, which requires that uh, the communication complexity is very small. So for example, it is often required that uh, the communication complexity is polylogarithmic in T, where T is a uh, time needed for checking whether the statement is true or not. And here I'd like to note that uh, all the succinctness sometimes also requires that the, the running time of the verifier is very small. Uh, in this work, we only cost the succinctness of the communication complexity. And informally speaking, uh, the existing uh, two round succinct argument can be separated into two groups. So the first group is a scheme based on no falsifiable assumption, and uh, the second one is a scheme based on falsifiable assumption. So regarding the scheme based on non forceful assumption, all I need to say is that uh, non forceful assumption are considered as a strong assumption in theoretical cryptography. So uh, even though uh, many of the schemes based on non forceful assumption satisfy really powerful property and practical efficiency, uh, in this work we do not consider these schemes. And rather, we focus on the scheme based on force five assumptions, and in particular, we focus on the scheme by Karai Lazlosibram and the subsequent works. So from now on, whenever I say uh, succinct argument, I always mean succinct argument based on force five assumptions. And this scheme are not as powerful as the scheme based on non force five assumption. But still, uh, they satisfy several nice properties, like uh, they can prove any statement in P or even some statement in NP. And also, they can be proven sound and uh, stand assumption, like uh, line with error, or more concretely, support fully homomorphic encryption or to run the private information retriever systems. So, uh, essentially, what I would like to say in this way is that. Uh, we already have a really good result on two, two round succinct argument based on false based on false false five assumptions. So now, uh, given this state of the art, a natural question to ask is uh, whether we can obtain as a succinct protocol by using a two round succinct argument. So, for example, since uh, interactive arguments have been used in many cryptographic protocols in the form of a separate argument or with an indistinguishable argument, I think it is natural to ask whether we can obtain a succinct version of this cryptograph protocol by just using the existing two of succinct argument instead of a normal interactive argument. Unfortunately, uh, there are several difficulties to what is done. And one of the main difficulty is that uh, the existing two-round succinct arguments are less powerful in several aspects, 
uh, when they are compared with the typical non-succinct argument in cryptography. So the first weakness of the existing dual succinct argument is that uh, currently soundness for fork and fig is not guaranteed. So this means that uh, for each application, we need to see what kind of entry statement need to be proven, and then we need to see whether such such statement can be proven by existing uh, two one success argument. And the second weakness is that uh, witness privacy is not guaranteed. And this means that uh, we need to consider an additional mechanism for guaranteeing uh, witness privacy, like uh, witnessing distinguishability or zero knowledge. And the third weakness is that uh, public verifiability is not guaranteed. At least when we focus on scheme based on well studied assumptions like uh, lagging with error. So this means that uh, the verifier query has uh, some secret information and uh, the verification cannot be made without uh, this secret information. So despite of this difficulty, we actually have uh, a few examples we using a succinct argument to obtain other succinct protocols such as uh, succinct access control for more performing access structure and uh, succinct monetary secure computation. However, uh, the number of applications is still limited, so it's important to study more about uh, whether they exist any other application to a succinct argument. And as I said earlier, in this work, we study application to committant pool protocols. So next, let me explain committant pool protocol. So what is a committant pool protocol? A committant pool protocol is basically a commitment scheme that has an additional pool properties. So in particular, it's a commit free that Pluba can commit to each secret input just as in standard commitment scheme. And later, in the additional proof phase, the proof can prove any statement on the committed value without opening the commitment. So in particular, for any attack free job function f, the proof can prove that uh, the committed value w satisfy f of w is equal to 1. So the most famous application of the committed protocol is a compiler from a stemion security to malicious security. So suppose there exists a semi-MS protocol in which a party P1 sends a message M to a party P2. So by using a commitment pool protocol, we can make this protocol maliciously secure uh, by considering a protocol where P1 first commits to a random string one, add one by using a commitment pool protocol, and then after receiving a random string R2 from P2, P1 computes a message M using R1 plus R2 as randomness and then prove by using a commitment pool protocol that uh, it computed M honestly. And here I would like to know that uh, we cannot replace the commitment pool protocol with a standard commitment scheme and the separate argument for OMP uh, when uh, black box use of a cryptographic primitive is desirable. So this is because uh, the use of the separate argument for OMP inherently requires uh, number of access to the code of the primitive, like uh, commitment schemes, and uh, in contrast, the uh, commitment protocol can be black box in the sense that uh, it uses the underlying cryptographic primitive or the black plane. So currently, we already have uh, several black box constructions of uh, commitment protocols. And in particular, we have both the uh, random optimal construction and the succinct construction. Here, uh, the round optimal construction have four rounds, and uh, this is optimal in the sense that uh, these constructions can be viewed as black box seven argument, which are known to require at least four rounds. However, uh, we currently do not have constructions that are both round optimal and succinct. And this is what we study in this work. So now let me explain our result. So our result is a succinct commitment pool protocol that satisfies the following properties. First, our basic, our basic scheme satisfies witness indistinguishability and the constant sound error. 
and it can be upgraded into one with uh, zero knowledge and uh, negligent sound error by using uh, existing transformation by Kurana, Ostrovsky, and uh, Srinivasan. Second, uh, our committant protocol has four rounds, and after being upgraded into zero knowledge and negligent sound error, uh, this round of complexity is optimal when our committant protocol is used as a topmost round argument. Third, uh, our committant protocol only requires relatively mild assumption, and in particular, it only requires a sub exponentially hard uh, collision resist hash function to run the private information retrieval and uh, to run the oblivious transfer protocols. And here I would like to note that the sub exponential hardness is required since in the analysis we use uh, complexity leveraging techniques. And finally, uh, our commitment per protocol is black box in the sense that uh, it uses the uh, underlying cryptographic primitive only a black box way. Now I have explained our results. Uh, in the rest of the talk, I will, I'm going to explain our techniques. So the starting point of our construction is the following non succinct construction based on the famous uh, MPC in the head technique. So it seems that uh, we have uh, two private impact MPC protocol where M is uh, any constant, and assume for simplicity that uh, this MPC is uh, deterministic. So in the commit phase, uh, the proof of split is secret input W into M secret shares, uh, W1 to Wm, and we commit to each of these shares by using any succinct commitment scheme. In the proof phase, uh, for an adaptably chosen statement L, the proof of first runs the uh, MPC protocol in its head, where the input to the parties are the M secret shares, uh, W1 to Wm, respectively, and uh, the functionality to be computed is F prime, where F prime is a functionality that takes the secret share as input and then reconstructs the secret value from the share and the variance statement F on the reconstructed secret value. Then uh, the proof and verifier executes the two round OT protocol, where the proof sends the decommitment to the M secret share along with the M. Uh, along with the MPC view of, of the M parties, and the verifier picks a random pair of uh, the MPC party, I stand Chester, and obtain M I stand M Chester, which includes the secret share on the MPC views of I stand Chester. Finally, uh, the verifier checks whether the MPC views of the I stand Chester satisfy the following conditions. First, uh, the MPC views of I sound Chester are consistent in the sense that uh, in the views, the messages that I stand sent to Chester are equal to the messages that Chester received from I star and vice versa. Second, uh, in the views, uh, the input to I stand Chester equal to the committee secret share double I stand double Chester, which is the verifier of the thing, so is the protocol. Third, uh, in the views, uh, the output of I stand gesture are both equal to one. Now, let's see, this game is uh, two witness in this term, witness in this term, several committant proof protocols. First, uh, this game is uh, witness indistinguishable because uh, the standard privacy of OT guarantees that uh, the verifier obtains uh, MC views of at most two parties. And uh, the two privacy of MPC guarantees that uh, the verifier cannot run any secret information in this case. Next, uh, this game satisfies soundness because of the following reasons. First, uh, the receiver privacy of OT guarantees that uh, in order to convince the verifier with uh, sufficiently high probability, uh, the prover need to send uh, a set of MPC views such that uh, each pair of the MPC view satisfies the three conditions that uh, the verifier checks in the verification. Now, uh, it is not hard to see that uh, in this case, the correctness of MPC guarantees that uh, the output of the functionality F prime for input uh, the committed secret share W1 to Wm is equal to 1. And thus, uh, from the definition of F prime, 
uh, each port that uh, the output of the statement f on the one if it's a collective W then W is also equal to one. And finally, this game is not succinct because uh, the previous and the secret share of the committed value and then distributes uh, through all two protocols. Now, uh, our high level idea to upgrade this non succinct construction into a succinct construction is uh, to let the proof approve the consistency of review, etc., uh, by using a two long succinct value. That is, uh, we consider a protocol where uh, instead of sending and views themselves, the prover just gives succinct commitment of the views and then proves that uh, each pair of the committed MPC views are consistency, consistent, etc., uh, by sending a succinct argument for each pair of the views as a result of the protocol. So, in total, the prover sends the MS square succinct argument as a result of the protocol. So good news is that uh, even after this demodification, uh, which is indistinguibility is still hold. So in particular, even though uh, existing two long succinct arguments do not provide address privacy, uh, this is not problematic since uh, the verify obtain a succinct argument only for a pair of MPC parties, and uh, the two privacy of MPC guarantee that uh, the verify cannot run any secret information from the MPC. Uh, of any two parties. However, uh, a problem occurs in the proof of soundness, and in particular, the problem is that the uh, existing uh, two run success arguments are not proof of sound for the particular entry statement we consider. So, we could that uh, we consider the protocol where the proof gives a success argument for each pair of the MPC parties, and in each of these success arguments, the statement is that uh, the exist MPC input or secret share uh, W1 to WJ and MPC view P and PJ such that uh, first they are, com they are committed in the succinct commitment and the second the MPC views are consistent, consistent etc. Now, roughly speaking, uh, the analysis of the existing succinct argument uh, does not work for this particular statement since uh, some element of the witness, in particular MPC views, PI and PJ, uh, committed adaptively after the verifiers and the query message Q of the succinct argument. So indeed, if uh, the entire witness was committed and adaptively, just like uh, MPC input W and WJ in the committed phase, then the analysis of the existing succinct argument could be used naturally for our setting as well. So, uh, essentially, the problem is that uh, we could include MPC views via PJ. Now, our solution to this problem is to analyze the soundness of all the succinct arguments jointly. So, that is, uh, rather than individually analyze each succinct argument uh, given, for each pair, each, given for each pair of the committed MPC view, uh, we jointly analyze the uh, MS squared. Uh, succinct argument uh, simultaneously. So the key point is that uh, if we analyze all the succinct argument jointly, essentially the witness uh, witnesses MPC input and views all the party instead of those of only a pair of party. And since the MPC input of all the party uniquely determine MPC views of all the party, uh, we can analyze soundness as if the witnesses uh, MPC input alone. And now, as I said earlier, since the MPC input are, are committed and not adaptively in the commit phase, uh, in this case, the analysis of the existing two run success argument can be used naturally for our setting as well. So, unfortunate news on this solution is that in order to formalize this idea, both the constructions and the analysis need to rely on low level detail of the success argument of uh, KRR 14. So, I won't explain the detail, but I just would like to know that uh, no significant modification is required and only natural adjustment are required. So, to conclude, uh, this is a summary of our result. So, thank you for listening.